see if I can go through the information on emancipation and share some of the abolitionists in the United States. There are more whites than black that I have on my slide. And the persons who I'm highlighting in particular are from my Visioneer series. My Visioneer series found on Amazon. We're at, we have Visioneers 1 and 2 and Volume 3 is coming up with women. So in Volume 1 and 2, I speak about the men. And in Volume 3, I'm going to speak about some women. So we are very thankful that many fought. There were abolitionists who got whipped for the blacks in the United States because they believe in freedom. Don't think that because of the color of one's skin that all persons with that color is evil. No. If we did not have persons from different races fighting for the blacks across the world, then emancipation would have taken a much longer time, a much longer time to come forth. And it would not have been as successful as it eventually came, became. So let me now just share the screen and run through this quickly as we prepare to close the show right after this. It's not just sharing the screen, it's sharing the whole slide. All right, so those of you on the radio won't understand what's happening. I'm actually uploading a slide for it to show on the screen. And it's processing. So there are some pictures. So you might hear names when you went to school and you were taught history. You might, you might hear the names but you can't put a face to it. Here, we have faces to some of the, the persons who were significant. If you look on the screen here, you will see the faces of some persons who were very critical. And the name on the slide is Visioneers, the American abolitionists who influenced our Jamaican history. So the abolitionists not only impacted impacted the United States history but they also impacted Jamaican history and if you were to look in this book here Visionaries Volume 1 you'd see people like Charles Finney and Asa Mahan and Asa Mahan was a consultant strategist to Abraham Lincoln and during the time when they had the Civil War in the 1860s it impacted the missions in Jamaica significantly because they, these abolitionists, they had sent out their friends, they had their own newspaper line, they were business people as well, and they had mission stations in Jamaica. They were helping to support schools, they were teaching our forefathers, our forefathers. Hence, it is important for us to always keep the link because America has always influenced since 1837 when the first abolitionist came to Jamaica from the United States to assist in the mission. So the missions stations, the place, the locations included Chateau, Hermitage, a place called Good Hope, um, Grant Hill in St. Andrew, where Oberlin Nazat was based. Elia, Devon, Spen, Brainard is where they started out. And then they expanded into, into St. George's, which was, called, which was actually Portland at the time. The first abolitionist who came, he was stationed in Shorthood. He knew the then governor, the then governor Gordon, 
George Williams Gordon's father, he he was what we, what we call like not governor, like a mayor at the time, right? Um, governor Ear was the governor during that time, but let me think. No, that's during go, George William Gordon time. But George William Gordon's father owned the land, the whole Cherry Garden Estate on Shortwood. He had owned the land, and he had given this property here. For those of you who are used to Grand Spen, this location is found right after you pass the gas station on Grand Spen. It's on the right hand side of the road, right before you get into Arcadia. And that was where he had his school. He worked along with the members of the London Missionary Society, and they had a church there. Uh, they had a congregational church there and a school so the name of the missionary is david steadman ingraham many don't know about him we don't have a picture of him because of how early he came to jamaica there was no illustration no drawing he died at the age of 29 so there wasn't there was a lot of written material found about him right found and in particular about his passion about freedom and against slavery he was written in the liberator newspaper and, and in other newspapers in the 1800s and he took a chance and he came to jamaica and helped so here we have the title of the slide called journey from slavery to freedom in 1834 slavery was abolished in jamaica however it was not abolished in the united states until in the 1860s however in jamaica the freedmen had an apprenticeship period right the slave trade that came from the africa took place in the form of a triangle exchanging goods from north america to europe and africa in exchange for slaves to the west indies so they sold tobacco coffee um sugar textiles um arms as well were traded okay the, the slaves they lived in the hut and um, they even when they were free they got harsh punishment in the united states after the abolition of slavery they still had to they experienced a lot of oppression through segregation and through racism so blacks in america had a much harder time than the blacks in jamaica believe it or not we we, we, we complain a lot but the blacks in America had a far much harder time because of racism and segregation. As a matter of fact, the abolitionists in the United States, they welcomed Jamaica's emancipation because they thought that it would have been a good testing ground for them to send freed, the freed emancipated blacks from the United States so they could they could live, they could immigrate, immigrate to Jamaica. They thought it was a good place to go to immigrate. However, when people like Nancy Prince came to Jamaica, they found out that the economic environment of Jamaica was not really conducive for blacks to really prosper. And that is why that part of their vision did not work. It didn't work. So can you imagine instead of Jamaicans migrating to the US, black Americans migrating to Jamaica? very few persons did that probably the ministers like george lyle or leal they call him george leal who founded the um the baptist the native baptist he left america and 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 he came to jamaica and found the baptist church movement the native baptist church however we see the other way around happening persons risk going into america where there was segregation and racism right for prosperity now in 1837 the pioneer in jamaica david steadman and his wife came to Jam came to jamaica they went to cuba first he found jamaica an interesting place to go because of the climate he where he was from in the united states was very cold and he was suffering from asthma so he had a problem with his lung right he saw the opportunity when he came to jamaica he realized that there was work to do pertaining to missions because it was like a pagan culture. They were still um, celebrating a lot of the African ancestry. And while Catholicism was here, you, we, we also had the Presbyterians were here, the Anglican was here, we, we, they, the other churches were here. 
however they were not spread out into the hills the rural parts of the nation right there was still a lot of work to do so when he came as an abolitionist he established himself and he lies with the micro institute in kingston the micro institute at the time was located where kingston technical high is now that was where the micro institute started right um there is a there, when, 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 there is a it's a very historic building by the way when you go to kingston technical right and that was where persons who came from the u.s especially those who came to teach those who came as abolitionists they would stay there they would get their newspaper it was like a hub at the time the micro was a hub right and it so happened that one of the pioneers who came became a principal of micro so let me continue we're looking on 1839 visionaries so after david came he called over some friends and he said there's a lot of work here for you to do and his friends came in the form of Julius Beardsley and his wife who they started out the Brainerd station in St. Mary in St. Mary and these names of the stations came from people in the US and other places in the United States so if you wanted to know how Brainerd got its name and how Oberlin got its name it came from the congregational missionaries who came in the 1800s right who were associated with Oberlin College in Ohio, USA. So that is some history for you today. Then we have Amos Dresser, who started out this place called Hermitage and Good Hope, that is in St. Mary as well, right? Close to Chesterfield side. Um, these were preaching stations that David Ingraham used to preach at, but he was just one man, he couldn't manage all these preaching stations. So when his friends came, he told them where, where it is that people needed to hear the good news and they as abolitionists came. Amos Dresser is very known in the United States for having gotten whipped by other whites because he went down to Nashville, Tennessee and he was giving out pamphlets about freedom, about slavery, about, right, about the, the need for love and that we're all brothers and sisters, that sort of a thing. And he was whipped in public by people who were even in the church because some of the persons who were on the on the um the, the jury the jurors of the court were church ministers in the presbyterian ministry i'm telling you you had christians who were slave owners at the time and these men who were abolitionists they separated from this main mission movement at the time because of people who were slave owners they were so against slavery from they were in college they were against slavery they they they, they were known in the newspapers because they decided to, to do a sitting at the school that they used to go to right so some were seen as troublemakers but they were appreciated they were they helped to the underground railroad ladies and gentlemen those who are watching abolitionists the same abolitionists who helped with the underground railroad in the united states the pioneers here they helped us here in Jamaica. We have George Hovey, George Hovey, Ralph Tyler, James Preston, right? Um, Martin Finch. We have Charles Stuart Redshaw, who actually started Oberlin, the community of Oberlin. When he came to Jamaica, he came and he met with um, he met with Mr. Ingraham and. Uh, at this, the same day, some persons, some native blacks came from Granton saying they needed a minister. And he joined them and he ministered at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Grant Hill, right? Renshaw, his name, Charles Renshaw. After a while, there was some disagreement. He bought that piece of land and he called it Oberlin after his alma mater. So we see here where the students were at Lane Seminary. Then they joined the Oberlin Institute. Why? Because they were friends of blacks. So they, they, they did not continue with their religious education because of racism. So they left and they joined a school that believed in unity. That school, Oberlin College, had both blacks and whites and that was a rare thing to do in those days. The president of the college at the time was Asa Mehan, the same man who I said was an advisor President Lincoln okay then their teacher was Charles 
Granny so Finney. Very popular, well known in the second awakening and revival of in America in the in the 1800s, in the 1830s, when, when he went to Boston and people just fell down under the anointing. And this is a man who wasn't initially a Christian, he was a lawyer. Um, along with, let me see, even Theodore Wells. For them to, to, to enter Christianity, it, it took divine interventions for them to be converted and to become ministers. Divine intervention. And Charles Finney, when I read his book, it was a blessing for me because he had divine supernatural encounters in the 1800s that I could understand. When there was nobody who I could really talk to who understood the experience I had um, in 2018, supernatural encounter, right, where I saw someone who had passed and what God had allowed me to experience. When I read his book and I saw what God did for him when his wife died, it inspired me. Don't give up, never give up. Not because you feel strange, not because you don't know anybody who experienced the same thing. There are others out here who God shared the vision with. And a famous quote of, Charles, of Charles Finney is that a willingness to deny self is the very spirit of Christ. It is the heart and soul of the gospel. The abolitionists were Christians. Freedom came because of Christian whites believe it or not not just fighting from blacks not because because only because of the civil war but freedom from whites who believe right in equality he was a very passionate lawyer and when he left law one of the things that happened was that he realized when he went to court a lot of the references the cases that he had to refer to came related to the scriptures so he said if I'm going to look on moral laws and I'm going to have to relate to the scripture, might as well I read the Bible for myself. And when he read the Bible, he got a huge awakening. So he is one hero, Charles Finney, in the 1800s, who inspired the abolitionist students we taught, right? And allowed them to have spiritual encounters and passion. Here we have an example of what Oberlin College looked like back in the day. Here we have a picture of Oberlin and the Underground Railroad and its importance. Oberlin College and the Underground Railroad. All right. So we see here that David Stedman Ingraham was very upset about slavery. And one of his quotes is, oh, what a murderer is slavery. It murders both the master and the slave and puts both in hell while they are on earth. Because he believed that the master, his soul would be impacted just the way he thought, right? Would be an issue. And he believed that they needed to not just accept Christ, but to desist from the practice because God is love. Okay. He was honored to be in Jamaica on August 1, 1838, when we received emancipation. He was unfortunate enough to see when America got emancipation. There were some states that were already free, but when the southern states got emancipation, he wasn't, he wasn't fortunate because he died young at 29. All right. But he wrote in the Liberator about what happened in Jamaica when we were emancipated and they wrote a song about it um he, he linked with a very popular baptist minister very well known baptist minister um they spoke about what happened in spanish town much can be read about david ingraham the pioneer and the abolitionist who supported us between 1837 and 1840 and when he died is daughter Sarah Ingraham she carried on his work in the 1860s during the time when they eventually got emancipation in the United States by then she had married to a minister named Penfield right named Penfield and they got to carry on the story they got to continue the journey and to write the story um, the in Ingraham was a trained teacher. He taught primary education. So at Shortwood, where they have Shortwood Church now, Shortwood United Church, 
they had a physical school where children were taught okay and you can look in the american missionary um journal volume 59 to 60 as well where you will see where david david ingraham at the time as a oberlin collegiate in ohio he decided he was going to start this self-supporting mission among the freed slave and then he contacted his friends and some of these friends are popular persons one of them actually started the, the, the credit check system now but you know it, it, it's not that it wasn't called that back then but the organization that he created eventually evolved into that eventually evolved into that so here let's continue i'm scrolling too fast because some of the things i've already said right so they impacted jamaica significantly the field was large and many letters were written if you were to go to google and you were to put in jamaica emancipation and so you would find information coming up if you were to type in theodore weld jc pennington and these people you you would see information coming up about jamaica and you'd find information about even the woolmer school the woolmer's trust in those days was established and from the woolmer's trust came the woolmer school along with the micro trust where the micro school was formed you understand and we see here in the like in the magazine called the emancipator january 17 1839 where david engraham stated that we are forming an anti-slavery society for the abolition of slavery throughout the world and we are anxiously looking forward to a time when the last shackles shall fall and earth shall hold a jubilee so he wanted papers to get information from not just the emancipator he said he wanted all that they had for the labor for the brothers in labors and for the oppressed so he was they, they, they had magazines and newspapers where the cause was published back then right and he was one writer sharing what was happening on the mission field the vision was global 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 vision not just emancipation in jamaica but emancipation in the united states he preached in places like um north street kingston guava ridge i have no idea where guava ridge is i'm assuming it might be near Papine. if i am wrong please tell me if you ever hear of a place called guava ridge in saint andrew he preached in the port royal mountains as well and the community of hillside in a parish at the time called saint david's so that might have been saint catherine um community of hillside right never heard of that community either right so we see where through his link with joseph garden who was costos george william garden's father he got the benefit of staying and they got the property um in shorthood and he called the place an old station where he was supervised by mr woldridge of the london missionary society at the time he had 115 students in the regular school and he had an evening school as well with 65 persons he taught adults to read so the abolitionists in america came here and they taught black people former slaves to read can you imagine they also had church and church school and they formed an auxiliary and anti-slavery movement was also formed here in jamaica due to the vision of these people right an anti-slavery movement these men had the holy spirit they were congregationalist minister but listen to this quote David Ingraham said, Oh, for more and more of the Holy Spirit to enlighten, to lead, to strengthen, to sanctify you all that you might be holy and without blemish in Christ's love. He loved the congregants. He loved the missions. He loved the people in the communities. And he came out very, very early to help during that season. In 1839, August 6th, he wrote a uh, letter to Amos Phelps where he 
welcomed Nancy Prince. She was known for charity. He welcomed Nancy Prince and said where she was to come and find him and shout to her at the Michael. Listen to me. David Ingraham, he had a global mission and the report from Jamaica was crucial. He said here that they were forming an anti-slavery society for the abolition of slavery throughout the world. And we're anxiously looking forward to the time when the last shackle shall form and the earth shall hold a jubilee. Mighty God, mighty God. That's the vision that he reported. From Jamaica, he wrote, the church at the time was a car short or it was called cotton tree and they had a vision as well to expand into the caribbean including in saint lucia that needed ministers they had a benevolent society as well and uh, david engram this diagram that he drew from a slave ship that landed at port royal was highlighted in a book um was highlighted in a book when this journal was actually found some years ago they found this book at this college i wasn't sure what it was just to realize how valuable it was it was a diagram of a slave ship where he drew the compartments and how many persons were placed in the different compartments of the slave ship and i was fortunate enough to get a copy of that diary from a fellow minister in the United States who spoke at the Emancipation Conference that we held online in August of 2019. I'm so grateful for that virtual conference with that, that we had right online. Slave ship, they were very passionate. When he spoke about how many rooms and where the persons came from and it took them 50 days to come from the coast of Africa. He was very sympathetic towards the black. So there are many persons who hate people because of the color of their skin. They think that because they're white, they no 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 no. God's spirit is in all people. His spirit is in all people. And he passed on that information about how to treat people as brothers and sisters to his daughter. Here we see Sarah and her husband. Penfield, if you were to go to the Brainerd Presbyterian Church in St. Mary, although that church is closed down right now, you will see there's a cornerstone at the bottom of the church, right? And there is a stone on the wall dedicated to David Ingraham and the baby that they lost called Nelly. So if you're in St. Mary and you're from Brainerd, if you go into that church, you're going to see a memorial stone on the wall representing this man here who came and he came and in 1841 he stayed until the 1860s while the civil war was going on and then he left because sarah died by then and he went to india so the information is there and you will see the relic he was very passionate he was placed at oberlin first and when Julius Beersley came back and the people voted him out, Oberlin Church left the Congregationalists and went to the Disciples of Christ. And he lost the church, but he held on to the bell that was at Oberlin because the bell was very valuable. Bell represent freedom and liberty. Liberty. And he transferred the bell from Oberlin to Brainerd in St. Mary. So that bell that you see on the property of the Presbyterian Church in Brain and St. Mary is a valuable historic bell. That bell came from Marlborough in, I think it's in Boston, when Charles Renshaw wrote and asked for the bell, asked for the bell when he was building the, 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 the church and the first school at the Oberlin Mission Station in 1840. So can you imagine having access to a bell that has been here from 1840? We have some rich history, but it made it possible because of the American abolitionists who believe in freedom, who will not only help us here in Jamaica, but were in the United States helping. Other abolitionists, I managed to find pictures for some, not for all. Couldn't find George Hovey, but I found James Flinch and even Jonathan Blanchard, right? These were men who helped, and Blanchard is a very popular man. 
very popular abolitionist in the time of the time. Some information about the mission field can be found in a book called Contentious Liberties. You'll find out about these abolitionists, right? Written by Gail Kenny, right? She wrote extensively about the impact of the abolitionists on the mission in Jamaica. Um, here to my right, at the top where you see Streamia, that man at the top, he is Julius Beardsley. We also have the brothers, okay, this man here below Charles Finney is Theodore Weld. We also have some brothers here, let me tell you the name of those brothers, the Tapans. They're, in, they're written, they're written about in my book Visionaries Volume 1. The Tapans. We have Lewis and Arthur. Lewis and Arthur Tapans. They were very big businessmen in Manhattan. But they were abolitionists. You know, sometimes you have to do your thing undercover. They were helping blacks, but they were businessmen. We have here, this is J.C. Pennington. He is a black man. He came to Jamaica and he helped the schools. He preached in Buff Bay at the Buff Bay Baptist Church. He came to Oberlin. He did a tour, a Jamaican tour. And these people wrote about um, Jamaica as well. This is Theodore Wright, a black man, very popular abolitionist at the time. Very educated. He experienced racism at Princeton. You can't imagine they get the opportunity to go to a prestigious school because of whites, you can't really do anything because of racism. But Theodore Wright is black, Theodore Weld, Theodore Weld is white. So this is Theodore Weld right here, the first the one, um, the second, first in the second row. And Theodore Wright is black, second to last in the second row, right? Um. In the, in the book, Visionaries, Volume 1, we also have George Whipple, George Whipple as well. Those were, they were main character and they were from the American Missionary Society. So all these names, I'm just looking on the content page in the book, Visionaries, right? We have Asa Mahan, Charles Finney, Theodore Will, Theodore Cedric Wright, Amos Phelps, Amos Dresser, James W. C. Pennington, Lewis and Arthur Tapan, George Ripple, Jonathan Blanchard, David Ingraham, um, Sarah Ingraham. We have Charles Renshaw, Julius Beardsley, as well as um, Penfield. And they helped Jamaica, they helped the schools. I wrote extensively about even how Oberlin High School started and where the funds came from another abolitionist quaker joseph Stern's sister so emancipation is very critical because jamaica was used as a study for these other countries including the united states and we want to thank we want to honor we want to acknowledge and recognize these visionaries these american missionaries these lame rebels, they were called rebels because they did not fit into the crowd. They were not comfortable with being racist. You couldn't be seen if you liked a black woman. You couldn't be seen with her. You couldn't marry who you wanted to marry. Right? And the wives of these ministers also became missionaries. They were very popular, powerful. Some were known for charity. Okay? I um, don't, not, don't remember the name of some sisters right now. There were two sisters who were very crucial. And um, Theodore Weld, who is the second man here on this picture, he married one of them, right? Two popular sisters. The names are in the book. I just don't remember the name right now. I wrote about the ABC FM, the American Board of Christian and Foreign Mission as well, right? And... Um, how important technical and vocational education was and the ideologies from then. How Charles Renshaw saw it important for tech folk to be introduced to Jamaica and he even wrote an essay about it and he was placed in a competition. And hence, 
the school at Oberlin and the school at Richmond involved having technical and vocational education, agriculture was a part of the curriculum because the people in the communities were farmers, just like those in Southern states, they were farmers, farmers. So it was important for you to not just learn farming, but you learn how to read in the process and you edify yourself spiritually as well. So very, very important. I know many persons didn't know that Americans had a role to play in our emancipation as well. These men were like founding fathers. They helped the underground railroad, right? They had a vision. If, if you read about Oberlin College, it was on the underground railroad. And they made it possible for persons to go to Canada, to leave the US and to go to Canada to get freedom from the impact of slavery. I have here a quote from Marcus Mazzaiah Garvey, and this is very important because Garveyism, Garveyism, you know about Guava Bridge, not Guava Ridge, no, Guava Ridge. Good afternoon, Elaine, good afternoon, right? Um, Garvey said, a people without knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture. It's like a tree without roots, right? A people without the knowledge of their past history and culture is like a people without roots. Garvey came in the 30s, in the 1930s, thereabout. And uh, his philosophies, his ideologies, along with those of Haley Selassie, right? And the scriptures, very important in the fight against racism and segregation. Very important in the fight against racism and segregation. So, I hope today you learned something from this it's a history lesson. And I want to leave a takeaway with you from this book. Right? The abolitionists weren't just people who fought against slavery, but they were leaders. And this book is about leadership. And the purpose, he says, they came to lead to show people the way through God's spirit. All right? Through God's spirit. Physical slavery may be over. This is a conversation I had with the Lord February 18, 2020, while writing this book. And he said, physical slavery may be over, but oppression still exists in so many ways. The main one is true poverty. That was never God's intent for mankind to be poor. When he made the world, he gave man power and provisions. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And slavery through oppression kills hope, kills health, kills faith, and even kills love. Without finances, there is destruction of lives. Families cannot be fed, dreams cannot be lived. Persons lose hope and trust in God without knowing the real reason why they are not prospering. And this, he says, it, it, it is, it, 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 it doesn't like the fact that persons have given hope in him, he says. Now, God explained why it is that slavery come about, came about, he says. What is the issues of life? He says the issues of life stem from the following reasons. Disobedience, oppression, strife, witchcraft, a lack of love, principalities and powers, the strongholds upon us, rebellion, lack of faith, hope and trust. And then he said, Proverbs 4 verse 3, Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Oppression is very dangerous, yes. You might not be physically enslaved today, but you may be oppressed in different ways, whether it be at work, in your community, or at home, spiritually or physically. Oppression is dangerous because it is unseen and influenced by the spiritual realm, and its intent is to kill your purpose, to kill hope, to kill love, and your trust. This topic of history, of leadership, of oppression, is very important to God because he wants us 
the experience all that we have had so we can give him the glory he says you will see the foundation and root causes of issues that can impact your life and the generation to come he wants you to know what are the real reasons why you're having blockages in the things that you're doing or the problems that you have he says people naturally react to their circumstances out of flesh if you do not have god within you will not have a natural inclination to think that there might be a spiritual cause to whatever you're experiencing even in business he says many lives have been destroyed because of oppression and when god spoke about this and the importance of why it is that he had to have the spirit inside people to ensure that emancipation came he showed me the spirit of fear of the spirit of pharaoh and he caused him the great oppressor but he says he teaches his people through the scriptures how to fight so while pharaoh is there while the spirit of pharaoh oppresses he says the stories in the bible for example moses and joseph are to give hope to his people but his people suffer because of ignorance it is his hope that you will understand that even in this modern day situation that the same things of all the same oppressive spirit exists and that God wants you to prosper and be happy oppression will always exist until the end of this world he says and he gave the hope to Jeremiah 29 verse 11 well listen to the hope that he is also given in this end times he said a new generation and I'm reading from the introduction page right page nine of visionaries volume one written by this and clark he says a new generation of deliverers are rising up there is also a generation of pharaohs and they <laughs> listen to what he says they operate covertly not openly so you're going through pharaohism through laws and policies and procedures and technological warfare he says they use positions rules doctrines and even spirits and might power to exercise their will taking away your will your joy and your peace those who they are supposed to help are not oppressed those individuals that are supposed to love you are not hate right and he says even though the oppressors are there he will send deliverers today to you just as how he did in the past with these abolitionists to deal with the fearers in your life the fearers in your businesses and the fearers in your ministries deliverers with various gifts and talents with a myriad of resources and so this will be until the end of this world this is a promise that God gives. He said, my network, God has an extensive network, business network, spiritual network. He says, my network will enable my net worth to help the less fortunate. So God has extensive amount of resources. It's unlimited. And it says he will help the less fortunate, whether physically, financially, spiritually, or socially. Just remember that obedience is key. Your gift will make room for you and that he will never leave you or forsake you. I love my people, says the Lord. Choose to serve me as those who risk their lives on the underground railroad chose to serve me and as those philanthropists who funded my missions chose to serve me. So the philanthropists like Lewis and Arthur Tapan. If you go and you search for those names right now, you'll see that those were big men in Manhattan. Right? They didn't just use their money in business, they used it to help to free black people. And they were fortunate enough to see freedom come. He says they chose to serve him not just as entrepreneurs but as evangelists and missionaries missionaries who sacrifice their lives for and the cause he says the cause which is to exercise brotherly love 
and godly love to mankind. So that is what freedom is about. That is what emancipation is about. That is what helping your brothers and sisters are about, he says. Because, right, is to exercise brotherly and godly love to mankind. So God is encouraging us today to choose to, to, to choose not to be selfish, but to be kind. Choose not to be self-righteous, he says. But to choose faith over fear, choose love over hate, choose elevation over oppression, choose service over pride, and choose God over the enemy. So don't go selling your soul to get money because he is still there to provide for you. And this business, the Creative Peace Coach, is a ministry, right? And we're a part of the Women Business Owner, right, in Ministry Network. It's the Christian Business Owner in Ministry Network. And we are on Facebook, and you're invited to join this network so we can share in our businesses, share ideas. It's the... CWBOM ministry is what you might find it on on Facebook groups, right? I can find it and post it in the in the chat here for you to find later on. And if you have a business idea and if you're struggling and if you want to go forward and to support, if your ministry is booked, if your ministry is whatever it is, right? We are here, Christian Business Owner and Ministry Network. So I'm gonna post it. Listen to what the Lord said. He said that we have to understand that, you know, although it is that we cannot see him, he's real and the things in the spirit are real and he loves us and his love for us, his people are real. So if we seek him, we will find him. We cannot give up. We cannot falter in faith. We cannot falter in purpose. We cannot falter in business. If he gives you a business, he will help you to ensure that your business prospers. He says, when you least expect it, when you have your faith, he says, you will have your very own encounter with him and that testimony that might even inspire you to become a visioner like the visioners in this book right here. Become a visioner, he says. Who is a visioner? The definition of visioner, according to the Lord, is this. One who sees and executes his spiritual purpose through the ideas, drives, passion, and concepts taught and given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is truth, life, and light of the world. Aspire to be a visioner. As we come to a close, we have six minutes left here. If you have any question, you can post it in the meantime so I can see. And I hope that you have been inspired so far by today's program, sharing with the businesses and sharing about the abolitionists. So God wants to help us. He says he will help us to have a fulfilled life when we become a visioner. Where, we, where the void that you have within you, within your spirit is filled and that thirst quenched because he knows what you need before you were forming your mother's womb he knew you you are mine he says and he will give you the living water so your spirit will never thirst again with god there is purpose hope and victory over all your circumstances so as you go through today i want you to think are you a visioner do you want to become a visioner what vision has God put inside of you pertaining to business? Look at the heroes I've spoken about in this book, Visioneers, right? Look at the brotherhood. If you, if you don't have the book yet, get the book. Get the book. It's online. It's cheap. The volume one is on sale for $10 right now, right? Look at the brotherhood and the network that they built. You can't do it alone. When you have a team, you will go further. He says, look at the legacy that they left. The legacy is not just in the southern states getting freedom, not just in the fact that the network in, in, in um, the East Coast and across the rest of the, 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 the U.S. 
expanded. The legacy existed in the businesses, in the ministries that they were a part of, in the Congregationalist Presbyterian movement, the Christian church movement, otherwise known as Disciples of Christ, right? These persons believed in freedom. The legacy still live on in Jamaica today, in the churches and in the communities that have been built by these people with a heart of hope and love. And also in the rest of the world because they didn't just stick to Jamaica. They were in Europe, they were in Japan, they were in China, they were in the Asia Pacific. They went across the world, they were in Africa, spreading the news about freedom and brotherly love. Emancipation is about brotherly love. Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. That is actually a slogan for Philadelphia. Philadelphia is my, my place, my second home. And I remember when I first went there in, in, two, in when, 1993, I was taken to the Liberty Bell. I, I, I think it's down by City Hall. Persons who are here can correct me. But it's downtown, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. Philadelphia and Boston and I feel the anointing all over me right now. My God. God is with us today. Philadelphia, Boston, historic place, sits in the United States, New York, New Jersey. Here there were welders from New Jersey. Those places on the East Coast, New England, New Hampshire, those places, Massachusetts. The state, very, very crucial to emancipation, not just in the United States, but in Jamaica. Ohio, Ohio, central point on the Underground Railroad. Um, David Ingraham came from Michigan. You understand? Very, very crucial. So he says, this happened because of the submission to God's spirit. If they didn't choose to submit to God's spirit, who is love? God is love. And he has commanded us to love. And it is with this brotherly love that we can get true freedom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because he is the one true God, Jehovah the I am, the God of love. So much more you can read about and hear about. Not just about slavery, but about leadership. I can't read all today. If you if you were to go to page 167, you'll see information about Louis Tapan as well and the Civil War, right? The Civil War that happened in the 1860s and how the Civil War impacted us here in Jamaica. And you will see a list of the names here. The abolitionists who came and the abolitionists who helped. It's been an honor to complete this project that God gave me. He said I am to honor the abolitionist to help us in Jamaica. And it is through his help that I was able to write this history so that we here in Jamaica could have because the information was not in our library in Jamaica. The, a lot of the information was taken out. The American Missionary Association in, um, in New Orleans have the information pictures of buildings and maps of Jamaica and different places it's so much boxes and boxes of information that I couldn't even write here but it's been an honor and a pleasure to be able to share with you that little excerpt from out of volume one of visionaries in volume two the cover is changed by the way volume two the cover have George William Gardner and Nate Charles Renshaw on it and another abolitionist on it right volume two speaks a lot about investments about prosperity about the mission stations it speaks about